Hello everyone, this is going to be a short video on how to set up a uh, laser to run. Uh, now that we have more people starting to hook up lasers, I thought it best to go through the settings uh, quickly so that everyone has at least an idea of how to make your laser work uh, under Augie, how to configure it and so on. If you have any questions, ask us on the forum. We're always happy to help. Okay, um, let's take a, take a look at one of the first tests that you should do. Down here in the laser panel, you can see I have a laser power button. Let's ignore that for the moment. I have a power slider and there's an auto on light. Auto on light means that the Pokies is running in real time PWM mode. This is the mode that we use for lasers. And if you want to test to see if you have it, just go to single line mode. And my single line MDI mode, uh, I enter just a few commands and I usually have them laying around because I flick back and forth uh, for a quick run of a command. Here you can see I'm on M3. I'm going to hit run. And when I hit run, you can see over here on the screen, it tells me what the period, channel, and axis is set for, and tells me that the uh, laser spindle real time is engaged. Now, this the laser would not be shooting even if I turned on laser power here at the moment. And it wouldn't shoot because we're not moving. Remember that the laser in Augie move, uh, will shoot only under two circumstances. One, when you push fire, such as this. Or secondly, when you're moving in a G1 move. And when you move in a G1 move, your power will be proportional to wherever this slider is in a ratio of how fast you are uh, at the feed rate. So at 1,000 uh, inches per minute, when I hit 1,000 inches per minute, I'll be shooting 78% power. The power is scaled beyond that to uh, correct for acceleration and deceleration curves and to keep the power output smooth. Okay, so we have an auto on light flashing. First question would be, um, what do I do if I do an M3 and my auto on light doesn't flash? Well, let's take a look at that. Let's do an M5 and turn that off first. As you can see, it went off. Um, remember, the single line MDI screen only executes the line that is that you're on uh, when you hit the run line. Okay, so let's take a look at um, why an auto on light wouldn't work. Let's take a look at our library. Um, and under G code, we have a G code lib. Make sure it's checked. The G code library uh, does every uh, uh, does everything from running the uh, spindle state and spindle speed and tool changes and so on. Basically, the G code lib interprets all the G code functions and any that you wish to implement are put in here. Set spindle state is the function that'll be called when the system sees an M3. Now that's set spindle state. Uh, when we look inside it, let me just check that out so we can take a quick look inside. And if we look at set spindle state, you can see here it actually calls a routine called spindle on or spindle off, depending on whether or not you're turning on the spindle. Now that means that somewhere in the system is a function called spindle on or spindle off. And if we look at our library, so under G code, we also have three types of spindle we have a frequency spindle, a laser spindle, and of course, a laser doesn't have a spindle, it has a laser, but since M3 is the call and it's a spindle call, we're going to call any output device triggered by an M3 a spindle. So in this case, we have three spindle libraries, and it's important that you check the one that you're going to use. If we were running a mill, we would have spindle lib frequency checked, and we wouldn't check the other two. Because each one of these libraries, when you look up here, it has a spindle on, a spindle on, and a spindle on. So when the system hits the G-code library and tries to call spindle on from the M3 command, it's going to look and if it sees more than one, it won't know which one to run. And if you have the wrong one selected, obviously it's not going to do what's intended. So you have to make sure that spindle lib laser is turned on. If you have it turned on, then when you do an M3, um, you should get uh, i got to clear this now because I filled it full of script. So if we execute an M3, it turns on our auto on because the script inside the laser spindle library was properly called. Second thing that you're going to need to do um, is set a few parameters to tell the system about uh, your PWM requirements. So here in engine config under engine planner config, you'll see several settings related to PWM. Um, the first one is minimum PWM and tickle. Uh, many lasers, RF ones especially, need a tickle pulse. If you do, 
If you do need a tickle pulse, this should be set to 1. If you need a wider tickle pulse, uh, you can increase it. I would recommend leaving it at a minimum of 1, even if you don't need a tickle pulse. It's uh, very unlikely that your laser, no matter what kind it, it is, will trigger on a 1% PWM. But keeping the 1 here allows you to see the free axis move when you turn on laser mode, which I'll show you in a moment. The next thing we have is maximum PWM. This is where you can limit how much power you send your laser. It's not a good idea to run most lasers at 100%. And in fact, you want to find a maximum PWM signal um, that doesn't take your laser over a prescribed milliamperage. Next one we have, if I stretch this out a little bit, it says min PWM power on. Um, my laser starts to laze when I give it a 2% PWM signal. Uh, it's very weak, but it lasers at 2%. Uh, a large number of high voltage lasers may not turn on until 17% or 27%. In order that the system be able to scale powers properly when it's doing 3D laser machining and so on, it has to know what at what point does your laser turn on. And that's the minimum PWM that you will put here. Um, if you find in test firing uh, that your laser doesn't do anything until you hit 21%, then you would add then you would enter 21 here. Then we have the PWM channel that you're going to use. Um, the Pokies has several channels. You'll pick which one you want and that will tell you which pin to use uh, to feed the PWM into your uh, laser high voltage supply. And then we have PWM axis control. Uh, here leave it on 8. Uh, unless you understand um, the repercussions of moving it, I would just leave it on 8. PWM period, you can see mine is set here to 200 microseconds. That uh, means 5 kilohertz, and that's what you drive an RF laser with. However, if you're using a high voltage laser, uh, you may want to use 20 kilohertz or 0 .00005 uh, for a period. This will affect how efficient your PWM is, but from what I've read, most high voltage lasers need 20 kilohertz, not the 5 kilohertz mine is set for. You can ignore laser spot diameter and focus distance for a moment. Uh, those will be used in future for automated scripts. And those are basically the only things that you need to have set up uh, before you start to play with the system to see if you can get things out of it. Um, one thing here, when I talked about laser PWM minimum, if you set it to at least one, then as long as auto on is on, in other words, as long as M3 has been activated so the spindle is on, you'll get an additional clue because you'll see the PWM axis up here, axis number 8. It is counting um, at exactly 1,000 uh, counts uh, per minute, uh, sorry, per second. Every millisecond this is being sent the PWM min of 1. So every second it goes up 1,000. If I was to shoot, you'll see the uh, free axis suddenly jump to uh, horrendously high counts because then you're sending larger numbers. So if you want to know if your PWM is being activated and uh, being activated properly by your testing system, simply dial up a power, press fire, and watch the free axis 8, how much it counts. It'll be pretty obvious to you when it's counting at 1 kilohertz, and when you press fire on a higher power, you'll see suddenly it jumps tens of thousands of counts. That means that your PWM is working. If your laser's not working at that point, it may be because you haven't turned on its power. I use uh, this button here to turn on the uh, relay, uh, relay number one, on the Pokies board that turns on the power supply to my laser. However, you may want to uh, change this button and put in a script to turn on um, a different relay or to use OC outputs on the Pokies uh, in order to activate the various parts of your power supply that you might need to make go. Uh, again, if you have questions in these areas, it's probably best to ask on the forum because we do at least now have some people that have been wiring up their lasers. All right, that was just a uh, quick overview on uh, what to expect when you're hooking up your laser and your first initial testings. Make sure your auto on light is working. If it isn't, check your libraries to make sure that you've activated the laser spindle library. Uh, it has to be going for a laser to work. Other than that, join us on the forum if you have questions and you're having trouble getting your uh, laser to shoot. Thanks a lot.